Dear all, welcome to the playlist of High Voltage Engineering. In this session, I will be discussing how to measure dielectric loss of a given insulation material by using high voltage sharing switch. This device is one of the example of non-destructive insulation testing method that is NDT. We have already discussed about what do we mean by NDT. This is very important for high voltage engineering testing. Now let us understand how you are going to measure dielectric loss by using sharing splits. As we already know that it obeys the principle of Wheatstone's bridge. Now let us familiar the circuit of sharing splits. First and foremost thing you need to consider the circuit of sharing splits. We have four arms AB, then BC, CD and AD. These are the four arms of sharing splits. We have high voltage AC supply over here. Similarly, let us let us familiar different components of respective arms. R1 and C1 that is representing the equivalent circuit of insulation material. Similarly, R2 represents non-inductive resistor. C3 represents standard value of capacitor or you can call condenser. Similarly, R4 and C4. Those components are representing variable resistor and capacitor respectively. Now, let us consider a cable and its insulator. The cable and its insulator are representing by using a particular arm that is R1 and C1. The voltage across arm AB that is equal to E1. Similarly, voltage across arm BC that is equal to E2. And the voltage across arm CD that is E4. And finally, voltage across arm AD that is equal to E3. Please note down uh, these parameters. Here, the unknown value of resistor R1 and capacitor C1 are to be calculated. What do we mean by R1 and C1? That R1 and C1 that is representing equal circuit of insulating material. Now, let us consider impedance of each arms. So, let us note down the values of respective impedance of particular arms. So, let me note down the impedance of first arm that is AB. I will be representing Z1. Z1 is equal to R1 plus 1 by J omega C1. 1 by J omega C1. Similarly, I need to calculate the impedance of the second arm, that is BC. I will be representing Z2. Z2 is equal to R2. Why? Because there is no reactance. Only resistance part is available. Similarly, I would like to calculate the impedance of this particular arm, that is AD. So let me denote by the letter Z3. Z3 is equal to 1 by J omega C3. 1 divided by J omega C3. Similarly, I would like to calculate the impedance of arm DC. How to calculate? Both are available in parallel. Both are connected in parallel. Now, let us take the ratio. I will be writing 1 by Z4. 1 by Z4 equal to 1 by R4 plus 1 by R4 plus 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 by J omega C4. Let me write in this manner. 1 by J omega C4. The ultimate goal, I will be repeating once again, to calculate the value of R1 and C1, both are unknown. That is representing the equal circuit of insulation material or you can call dielectric material. Now let us apply the v stones bridge principle. How to apply v stones bridge principle? According to v stones bridge principle, the bridge will be balanced when the galvanometer or a detector shows null deflection. Make sure that the detector shows null deflection. At that time, we will come to know that the bridge is getting balanced. You can apply the bridge balancing principle. It is basically Wheatstone's bridge principle. 
you can apply v stone splits principle that is when the bridge is at balanced condition i can take the ratio like this z1 this is z1 z1 divided by z2 this will be z2 that means impedance of a second arm that is equal to z3 this will be z3 divided by z4 okay now you can easily substitute the value of z1, z2, z3 and 1 by z4. So z1, what is the value of z1? z1 is equal to r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 divided by, what is z2? It is nothing but r2 that is equal to, then z3 into 1 by z4. I can write z3 by z4 equal to z3 into 1 by z4. Very simple. z3 into 1 by z4. So, Z3, what is Z3? Z3 is nothing but 1 by J omega C3. 1 by J omega C3 into 1 by Z4. What is the value of 1 by Z4? I already know the value of 1 by Z4. Into 1 by R4 plus 1 divided by 1 divided by 1 by J omega C4 J omega C4 Let me write the remaining part Let me simplify the remaining part over here So let us rewrite once again R1 plus 1 by J omega C1 divided by R2 that is equal to 1 by J omega C3 into 1 by R4 plus 1 divided by 1 by J omega C4 can be written as J omega C4 J omega C4 let me close the bracket now let me split the terms we can write A plus B divided by C is equal to A by C divided by B by C. Same manner, I can split. Let us modify the equation. We can write R1 by R2. R1 divided by R2. Plus 1 by J omega C1 divided by R2. So we can write 1 by J omega C1 into R2. 1 by J omega C1 into R2. That is equal to, here you can cross multiply. 1 and 2. Likewise, you can multiply. So, by multiplying, I will be getting 1 divided by J omega C3 into R4 plus J omega C4 divided by J omega C3. So, I can write C4 divided by C3. Why? Because J omega and J omega will be getting cancelled. So, therefore, C4 divided by C3. C4 divided by C3. Now consider this equation. This is the final equation. From this equation you can do one thing. E equating real and imaginary part. This is basically a complex number. So you can able to equate real and imaginary part. First let us consider the real part. So these are the real part. These are the real part. Now equating real part of LHS and RHS. Therefore R1 divided by R2 is nothing but C4 divided by C3. What is my objective? My objective is to calculate the unknown resistance and capacitance. So from this equation I can easily calculate unknown resistance. That implies R1 equal to C4 by C3 into R2. You can keep this equation for calculation of dielectric flows. This is the final equation, one of the final equation. Similarly, I would like to calculate the unknown value of capacitor that is C1. Let us cal calculate the value of C1 immediately. Now, consider the imaginary part. These are the imaginary part. So, please equate those imaginary part. 1 divided by 
j omega c1 r2 that is equal to 1 divided by j omega c3 r4. From this what I can do? j omega and j omega will be getting cancelled. I will be cancelling j omega. So what are the terms which are retaining? 1 by c1 r2 and 1 by c3 r4. So you can modify the equation. You can cross multiply. That means 1 into c3 r4 that is equal to 1 into c1 r2 or any, any way you can modify. It is up to you. So I will be writing c1 into r2 that is equal to c3 into r4. From this equation I can able to calculate the unknown value of capacitor. So unknown value of capacitor c1 is given by c3 into r4 divided by r2. So this is the unknown value of capacitor. So you can put in a separate block so that it will be helpful for calculation of dielectric loss. So unknown value of capacitor and the resistor are given by using this equation. Now you need to consider the phasor diagram. From the phasor diagram, uh, you need to calculate the value of delta. So if you calculate the tan delta, it is in the form of loss tangent. That means dielectric loss will be measured in terms of tan delta, in terms of loss tangent. Now let us calculate what is the value of tan delta. That means dielectric loss, how we can able to calculate. So you can note down one formula. From the phasor diagram, we can write dielectric loss or loss tangent tan delta is equal to omega into c1 into r1. Therefore, you can substitute omega into what is c1? c1 is given by c3 divided by r2 into r4 into what is r1? r1 is nothing but c4 divided by c3 into r2. You can solve this equation. Here, R2 and R2 can be cancelled. Similarly, C3 and C3 will be getting cancelled. Please find out the remaining terms. That means tan delta is equal to tan delta is equal to omega into C4 into R4. C4 into R4. So let me write separately. The equation is very simple tan delta that is equal to omega into c4 into r4. You can keep this equation in separate block so that it will be helpful for solving the numerical example. Where omega is known as angular frequency. So if you know the supply frequency, you can easily calculate the angular frequency. That means 2 pi f. It will be normally expressed in terms of radian per second. So this is the way how to calculate dielectric loss. Tan delta is nothing but omega into C4 into R4. This tangent, tan delta is known as loss tangent. So with the help of loss tangent, you can able to determine how much amount of heat will be dissipated. That means dielectric loss. That means loss tangent and dielectric loss both are in the similar term. So this is the way how to determine the value of dielectric loss by using high voltage sharing switch. Now let us understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of high voltage sharing switch. Now let us understand the advantages and disadvantages of high voltage sharing switch. When it comes to advantages, the balanced equation will be totally independent of frequency. So that error will be very less. Similarly, arrangement of the bridge is very cheaper. It is not too costly. So these are the major advantages of sharing switch. When I talk about drawbacks, the skin effect is the major disadvantage. It may lead the heating effect. Okay, losses also will be increased because of this skin effect. Why? Because it is operating with a high voltage AC. Similarly, uh, the connecting leads, because of connecting leads, the residual inductance will be arised over them. Moreover, parasitic capacitance is also another issue of uh, this sharing switch because we have different type of connecting leads. That lead, that, uh, that will create residual inductance as well as parasitic capacitance. These are the major pros and cons of high voltage sharing switch. Let's, let's conclude the session. In this session, 
I have discussed about how to measure dielectric loss by using high voltage shearing splits. So we can able to determine the value of unknown capacitance accurately. Finally, I have derived an expression for dielectric loss that means tan delta, how to calculate tan delta and uh, thereafter I could list out what are the pros and cons of high voltage shearing switch. This is my reference. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this channel useful, please do subscribe. Thank you.